Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we'll continue our investigation of the action, origin, insertion, and innervation for muscles of the lower extremity. The first set of muscles that we'll investigate are commonly grouped together and are called the triceps surae. And when we see or hear the word triceps, we immediately think about the number three. But if we're only listing two muscles, that doesn't seem to add up. And the reason we call these two muscles triceps is because the gastrocnemius has two heads and the soleus has one. So together we have a total of three and that's why we use the name triceps. The first muscle we'll investigate of the triceps surae is one that's commonly referred to as the calf muscle, but it's more appropriately referred to as the gastrocnemius. Its actions include plantar flexion of the ankle and flexion of the knee. Now, its origin is on both the lateral and medial femoral condyles, and we'll show those origin points here. And the gastrocnemius insertion point is on the calcaneus, and we'll show that insertion point here. And last but not least, its innervation is the tibial nerve. The remaining muscle that belongs to the triceps surae is the soleus, and its primary action is plantar flexion of the ankle. Now its origin is on the posterior aspect of the head of the fibula and on the medial border of the tibia, and we'll show those origin points here. And the soleus insertion point is on the calcaneus, and we'll show that insertion point here. And last but not least, its innervation is also the tibial nerve. Now that we've covered the muscles of the triceps surae group, let's transition to discussing other muscles of the lower extremity. The next muscle we'll review is the plantaris, which is a very thin muscle, and its actions include plantar flexion of the ankle and flexion of the knee. Now, its origin is on the lateral supracondylar line of the femur, which is just superior to the lateral femoral condyle, and we'll show that origin point here on the image. And the plantaris insertion point is also on the calcaneus, and we'll show that insertion point here on the image. And last but not least, its innervation is the tibial nerve. The next muscle on the list is the popliteus and it's responsible for unlocking the knee when it's in an extended position, which happens through a type of internal rotation occurring at the knee. And its origin is on the lateral aspect of the lateral femoral condyle, and we'll show the origin point here on the image. And the popliteus insertion point is on the posterior aspect of the tibia, and we'll show that insertion point here. And last but not least, its innervation is the tibial nerve. Next is the tibialis posterior. Its action is plantar flexion of the ankle along with inversion of the foot. Its origin is the posterior tibia and the interosseous membrane. And we'll show these origin points here on our image. Its insertion is on multiple points of the foot, which includes the navicular, cuneiforms, and metatarsals 2 through 4. Now, when we reference the cuneiforms, we're referring to the medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiforms, and we'll show those insertion points here as they appear on the plantar surface of the foot. The innervation of this muscle is the tibial nerve. Next is the flexor digitorum longus. Its action is flexion of toes 2 through 5, along with inversion of the foot and plantar flexion of the ankle. And its origin is on the posterior tibia, and we'll show this origin point on the image here. Its insertion is on the distal phalanges 2 through 5, and we'll show these insertion points as they appear on the plantar surface of the foot. And lastly, its innervation is the tibial nerve. Next is the flexor hallucis longus. The action produced by this muscle is flexion of the great toe along with plantar flexion of the ankle, and its origin is on the distal two-thirds of the fibula, and we'll show that origin point here on the image. Its insertion is the distal phalanx of the great toe, 
and the insertion point is shown here as it appears on the undersurface of the foot. And the innervation for the flexor hallucis longus is the tibial nerve. Next is the quadratus plantae. The action of this muscle includes flexion of the toes, specifically toes 2 through 5, and it originates on both the medial and lateral portions of the calcaneus. It originates at those points shown here on the image. And the insertion is connected to the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus, and we'll show the insertion point on our image here. The innervation of the quadratus plantae is the plantar nerve. Next is the abductor digiti minimi. The action of this muscle, as the name implies, includes abduction, but it also affords us the opportunity to perform flexion of the fifth toe as well. Its origin is on the medial and lateral aspect of the calcaneus, and we'll show the location of those origin points here. The insertion is on the proximal phalanx of the great toe, and we'll show that on the image here. And last but not least, the innervation of this muscle is the plantar nerve. Next is the extensor digitorum brevis. Its action is to, as the name suggests, extend the digits, especially digits 2 through 4. Its origin is on the lateral aspect of the calcaneus, and we'll show that origin point here on our image. Its insertion is on the distal phalanges 2 through 4, and we'll show those insertion points here on the screen. And last but not least, the innervation is the fibular nerve. Next is the extensor hallucis brevis. Its action is to, as the name suggests, extend the great toe, and we know this because of the term hallucis, which refers to the toe itself. Its origin is on the dorsolateral aspect of the calcaneus, and we'll show the origin point here. And its insertion is on the proximal phalanx of the great toe, and we'll show that insertion point here. The muscle's innervation is the fibular nerve. The next muscle is the dorsal interossei. Its action is flexion and extension of the toes, and it also allows for abduction and flexion of the metatarsal phalangeal joints. Its origin is on or between adjacent metatarsal bones, specifically 1 through 5, and we'll show those origin points here. The insertion is on phalanges 2 through 4, and we'll show their insertion points here. And lastly, the innervation for the dorsal interossei is the plantar nerve. Next on our list are the lumbricals, and the action of this group of muscles includes flexion and extension of the toes, specifically toes 2 through 5. The origin begins at the location of the flexor digitorum longus tendon, which is showcased here. The insertion of these muscles are on the proximal phalanges, specifically toes 2 through 4, and we'll show these insertion points here and the innervation of this muscle is the plantar nerve. And last but certainly not least, we have the flexor hallucis brevis. And just as the name implies, flexion will be the primary action. And as mentioned previously, it will attach to the great toe, given the name hallucis. And the term brevis indicates that the muscle is relatively short. So officially, we can say that the action of this muscle is flexion of the great toe, and its origin is on both the plantar aspect of the lateral cuneiform and cuboid. It also has an origin point on the posterior tibialis tendon, and we'll show those origin points here. And feel free to make note as well that our green circle is where we'd find the tendon of the tibialis posterior. The insertion of this muscle is on the undersurface of the great toe, specifically to the medial and lateral aspect of the proximal phalanx, and we'll show those insertion points here. And lastly, the innervation of this muscle is the plantar nerve. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful, and I look forward to connecting with you in the next one.